Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. And today we're gonna do a deep cleaning of this Dan Wesson Model 15. Now off camera, this firearm has been completely unloaded and there's no ammunition in the area. And we're gonna start with removing this grip with a 5/32 inch bit here. Now that we have the grip off, we're going to remove the barrel. Now these Dan Wessons came with interchangeable barrels, so yours might be shorter or longer, depending on what model you have. Either way, they still clean up the same way. Now to remove this barrel, we need to remove this barrel nut. Now I don't have the barrel nut wrench from Dan Wesson, and unfortunately on this Dan Wesson, this nut is fairly loose. So I'm just gonna use a spanner wrench. Now if this doesn't turn easily for you, make sure you get a barrel wrench for this. There's several aftermarket ones out there. Now this one is a fairly easy one to open up because it hasn't been rusted shut. Now if you have a tight one, you might want to soak it in some penetrating oil. Now this one is pretty easy. You can see right now it's far enough out that I don't even need that wrench. So there is the nut. There is the barrel shroud. And from here, we can simply just unscrew this barrel. As you can see, this barrel is in pretty good shape. There's not a whole lot of rust on it. I mean, there's a little bit inside the threads. We're just gonna make sure that we get some really good oil in there to make sure that this barrel is preserved. Now that we're just down to the frame of the revolver, we're gonna remove these two cap screws here with a 5 64th inch bit. Now notice how the upper one is shorter than the lower one. You want to remember that for later for when you have to put this thing back together after doing this deep cleaning. Now we should be able to lift this side plate right off. Now there's a little hump right here to keep the front in. So we'll have to lift a little bit from the back and then remove it. You can see there's some grease here that's been caked in that will get cleaned up. So since this has been cleaned with grease before, everything's being held together really nicely. Sometimes this hand will pop off when you disassemble these. It's not a big deal. Now in this next step, we're going to take the pressure off of this mainspring. Now you can do this step before you take the side plate off. I generally like doing it afterwards so I can see what's going on. And what we'll do is we will actually cock the revolver. And then we're going to take the long screw that we took off the side plate, insert it right up in here. And we're actually going to screw this in. And as you can see, it's holding that back. So there's no pressure on this hammer. You can see it just will freewheel really nice. As you can see, that hand just popped off. So we're going to just remove it now. So our next step is to release the tension on the trigger return spring. And right here, we're just going to take a screwdriver and you can see here's the trigger return spring right here where it hits the trigger. And I'll put my finger right over top of it and just lift up. Now you can see the pressure on that spring has been released. So now we can remove the trigger. It's real simple. All we're going to do is lift it up. Right here, you can see, we're just going to lift up. You may need to jiggle it back and forth. But eventually, that trigger will come out. We can now remove the connector and handspring. Now, this thing's just sitting there, so there's not much to do, but pick it up. Now this spring is just right on this little peg of the connector. So we can just lift it up and then rotate it and pull the little leg 
through the hole there. Now to remove the hammer, we're just going to lift straight up and that return spring is going to come with the hammer. Now to remove this spring, we're just going to push it up into that cavity and just let it drop through. Now that we have this hammer out, there's three more parts that we need to deal with. And it's the strut, the strut spring, and the strut plunger. Now, this is under tension. You can see right here the strut is moving back and forth. So what we really need to do is kind of cover up to make sure we don't shoot that spring and plunger across the room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this out. And it'll go either direction, but I'm going to push it down while I'm wrapping my thumb around it. So from here, I'm just replacing my thumb with that strut. And from here, I can slowly remove the tension. And now that that strut's off, I can remove the plunger and the spring. So from here, just remove that out. And I'll need something to get in there to get the spring. Just like that. And now that hammer is completely disassembled. Now, before we remove the firing pin, we need to remove the cylinder. Now, depending on how old your Dan Wesson is, this might be a little bit different. If you have the older pork chop version, which can be identified by the barrel shroud, you'll see kind of like a leg that comes off of this. When you remove this off, the cylinder probably fell forward. Now, if you have one of these newer ones, they remove a little bit different. Right here is a crane lock. And what we'll need to do is remove this crane lock. And you can see right here, I can't quite get it with a pair of tweezers. If you open up the cylinder here, you can just slowly work it back and forth. And you'll see that that crane lock actually just slides right off. And I'm just going to take this, turn it upside down, and there's the crane lock. Now we can remove the cylinder assembly from the frame. And to do that, it's real simple. We're just going to open this all the way and pull. There's one more thing we want to remove from the frame before we deal with the firing pin and the cylinder alignment ball. And right here is the bolt, or otherwise known as the cylinder latch. Now this may be in the up position or it might be in the down position. You'll need it in the down position to remove it. We're going to simply slide that down and then lift up on it. Now to remove the cylinder alignment ball, we'll have to remove a screw through the back. And right here is a flathead screw that we're going to remove. Now we do want to be careful because this is under spring pressure and we don't want the part shooting across the room. We can push back on the ball a little bit here. And that spring and ball are going to come out. Now we only have two more things to address on the frame before we get to the cylinder. What we're going to do is remove the firing pin. Now we're going to take a 1 16th inch roll pin punch and drive this pin. Right there. Now this firing pin is under spring tension, so I'm going to put my thumb right here, push in, and then remove my roll pin punch and then slowly release that spring. Now from here, I'm just gonna take a pair of tweezers and remove that firing pin and spring. Then I'm gonna finally just remove the spring from the firing pin. Now the last thing we gotta remove is this main spring. And to do that, we're gonna to need to take something to take the pressure here, and a cleaning rod works good, a punch, anything that you can control that main spring. I'm going to hold this together while I remove this screw. You may be able to see on camera that the cleaning rod is starting to stretch out. From there, we'll remove the screw. And there we go. So the last thing we have to disassemble before we do this deep cleaning is the cylinder and the crane. Now inside the crane here, we're going to pull the bolt plunger and the bolt plunger spring. Now the bolt plunger spring is probably on there pretty tight. There's no real need to take this thing off, but you can if you want to. 
Now we're going to unthread this ejector rod and you can see the extractor is attached to it. So what I'm going to do is just simply unthread this and there's a spring in here that we'll need to be careful of. Take that off. Then we can just pull the cylinder right off. And right here is the extractor. We just pull that straight out. And we can pull this spring. So on this ejector spring, there's a bearing. So make sure you don't lose that. I'm just going to twist, and there it is. Now all we have left to disassemble is this crane, which only has this latch. And on the front here is an Allen screw that we're going to take an Allen wrench, and it's a 500 inch Allen wrench. And I'm holding down on the latch. I'm going to unscrew this Allen screw on the front. Remove that screw. And then from here, we can let that pressure off of that. We can slide the latch off. And then you can see in here, there's a spring. So I'm just going to take my Allen wrench here and remove that spring. Now this Dan Wesson is taken completely apart with the exception of the sights. We're not going to take them off because there's really no reason to for this deep cleaning. This gun is not in desperate shape, but it does need some attention. It is a little bit older, so we're going to deal with making sure this gets cleaned up. We'll get rid of all of this grease that's in there, clean the barrel, and make sure that we preserve these springs that have a little bit of rust on them. Now that the gun's disassembled, it's time to start deep cleaning it. Now off camera, I ran a bore scope through a bunch of areas of the gun, and I'm seeing some rust in some deep areas that we're going to need to address. But right now, I'm going to worry about getting all of this grease off the gun and getting these down to just bare parts. That way, I can start really protecting them with some good oil. So I'm going to use some gunk blaster to try to get this stuff just really cleaned out. All right, this gunk blaster is really starting to dissolve this grease and I'm going to give it a little bit of a hand here because this stuff is really caked in there. Usually I would do this outside or in the garage where I can get that spray nozzle going really good, but down here in the studio I just don't have that opportunity. Now earlier I ran a bore scope through this barrel and it looks like there's a bunch of leading in there but it doesn't look like there's any rust so we're just going to have to continue the deep cleaning process with a lot of passes with a brush and some solvent and see if we can get this thing cleaned up. Now the one thing that's nice about these removable barrels is well now we can really get in there and clean it and just one pass you can see a bunch of lead coming out. I'm going to take some bore solvent here and wet a patch and let this thing soak for a while. So while that barrel is soaking, we're going to try to clean the cylinder up, especially the front, because there's always a lot of carbon that gets in the front of these cylinders and it's kind of tough to remove. So I'm going to just take my time and try to get some of this carbon just cleaned up and make the cylinder look just like it was new. Carpet on the front of these cylinders are really hard to clean up. And what I used actually was some Barkeeper's Friend. Because this is stainless steel, I'm not all that worried about a finish. So I cleaned it up really nice. You could see that that carbon just came right off. I've tried bore solvents and all kinds of stuff. And 
you really had to put a lot of elbow grease onto it but this barkeeper's friend just took that stuff right off now i'm soaking the cylinder right now with some bore solvent and then i'm going to go back to the barrel and let's start working on that So as you probably see, this patch is coming through a little bit dirty, but that's okay because we're still trying to get all that stuff out. We're just gonna run patches until this comes clean. <clears throat> and with that, the patches are coming through clean. Let's throw the bore scope down it to see what we got. That bore's not looking too bad, so now it's time to move on. So I'm just going to kind of clean out the cylinder here, get the rest of that solvent out, and then uh, we're going to move on to some rust. Now with the cylinder and barrel cleaned up, it's time to work on a little bit of rust. So when I was pulling the mainspring out, I saw some rust at the bottom of the mainspring, which really meant there's some rust deep down in here. So we're going to work with that. It's going to take a lot of time and a lot of soaking with some oil just to make sure we get this thing cleaned out but it's definitely worth it to preserve the gun. It's a common myth that stainless steel does not rust. You can see it right here on this gun because I do have some rust right in here and into some of these screw holes. So it does actually rust. Now I ran the bore scope down here to see what I was looking at and um, there is a good amount of rust. So I'm gonna just take some really good oil here and Use a Q-tip just to get deep in there. Make sure that this stuff is spread out. And then I'm gonna let it soak for just a little bit. And then this is just a process of just oil and clean, oil and clean, until we can remove all the gunk out of there. Now that we've removed the rust out of that main spring housing, it's time to clean up some springs. So some of these springs and screws have some rust on it. As you can see here, this spring, this is the main spring, it's got some good rust on it. So I'm just gonna kinda clean them up a little bit here. And uh, then we're gonna start working on protecting them with some good oil. I'm just gonna try to get some of the rust off of these. I mean, you can see that main spring's got some pretty good rust on it, but fortunately it's surface rust, so it's not that big of a deal. Now that I've neutralized that rust, it's time to start reassembling this gun. Now there's still some oiling that we need to do, and I'm gonna do that as we go. We're gonna start the reassembly process with the crane. So we're obviously gonna need the crane. We're gonna need the latch retaining pin. We're gonna need the latch, and we're also gonna need the latch spring. Now for tools, we'll need a 500 inch Allen wrench. Now to install the spring, you need to bend it into a U shape. What I like to do is take my spring and put it on my Allen wrench like this and just bend it in and push it. Now we'll need to somewhat get this level in there. Now with the spring installed where it's somewhat level on both sides, it's time to start putting in the latch. For the latch, you'll see the textured side will actually go up. So what this does is simply slides into place just like that. Now the easiest way to identify this pin is because it has a hex head to it. So I have this on my Allen wrench and I put a little bit of blue Loctite onto the threads and I'm going to squeeze that latch and then insert this. Now you're gonna to have to just kind of play with that latch a little bit going in and out so that way you know that everything is lined up. This pin won't go in if the latch is too far down or too far back. Now it's fully installed when it's just under the surface of the front of the crane. Now we're gonna reassemble the cylinder. And for this, we're gonna need the cylinder, the ejector rod, the ejector spring, the ejector bushing, and the extractor. Now to tell the difference between the ejector spring and the main spring is that the main spring is longer and has more coils. Now we're gonna put the bushing onto the spring and it's not gonna matter which end it goes into. 
And from here, that is going to go into the crane. I'm going to take a little bit of gun oil and squirt it onto a Q-tip. And I'm just going to oil the crane. Now the way this goes is the front of the cylinder is going to go towards the crane. Just like that. Now we can oil the rod. And what we're going to do is just put a light film of oil and then slide that into the front of the crane. Now the trick to installing the extractor is that it's keyed. So you'll see this little groove right here will match up with a groove on the cylinder. And we'll install that. And now we'll compress everything and then screw in the rod into the extractor. And from here, that crane is reassembled. Now we're going to install the mainspring into the frame. To do this, we're going to need a 564th inch Allen wrench and a cleaning rod. We're also going to need the frame, the mainspring, the mainspring guide, and the long side plate screw. Now I've already put a light coat of oil onto these and I'm going to slide the mainspring in and then the mainspring guide. Now you'll notice there's this little nub here on the end that's going to face up. Now I'm going to put the screw into the bottom here so make sure that I'm ready for when I can screw this together. So I'm going to flip this over and compress my mainspring. When I do that, you can see that this little screw will start floating up. From here, I'm just going to screw this in. Now it's time to put the firing pin back in. And the tools we're going to need for this step is a hammer, a 1 16th inch punch, a 1 16th inch roll pin punch, and then something to hold the roll pin. Now the parts we're going to need is the firing pin, firing pin spring, and the roll pin. Now I'm just going to line this roll pin with the hole here and give it a couple of taps, just enough to start the install. Now what we're going to do here is install the spring onto the firing pin. Now I'm going to take my firing pin and insert it into the back of the frame. Now this is where our standard punch comes into play. I'm going to push down on the firing pin and insert this into the other side. Now I'm not going to drive this all the way through. I just needed it enough to hold that firing pin in place. Now I'm just going to take my roll pin punch nail and finish driving my roll pin in. And basically I'm going to replace this punch with that roll pin. Now that roll pin is fully installed when it's just below the surface on the left and the right. I'm going to take a punch here and just test and that firing pin moves nice and easy. Now we're going to install the cylinder alignment ball and the tools that we're going to need is just a flathead screwdriver. Now we're going to need the alignment ball, the spring, and the screw. So what we're going to do is drop this ball right into this hole here and then follow it with the spring. Now I did a light coat of oil on these off camera so these are ready to go. Now we're just going to drop our screw. Now it's a little hard to align the screw. You need to be careful that you do not strip it. And we're just going to get this to be just below the surface. We don't want to make it too tight or else that cylinder will never latch in. Now we can install the trigger. And for this step, we're going to need the trigger, the bolt, which is also known as the cylinder latch, the connector, and the handspring. So what's going to happen is this little jog in the spring is going to go in this hole, and then we're going to rotate down, and this coil is going to go right on this pin. Now at the bottom of this connector is another pin. And what's going to happen is this is going to slide into the right hand side of the trigger and it's going to be able to pivot. So now we're going to install this bolt. 
and it's going to go onto this front pin and then I just like to push this thing up so it's out of the way and into that slot. Now we're going to install the trigger. Now I've already pre-oiled all of these parts so that way they're ready to go in. Now with that bolt installed we're just going to simply install the trigger onto the second pin here and we're going to rotate that connector straight up. Now it's time to put the hammer back together. For this step we're going to need a hammer, strut spring, strut plunger, the strut, and the trigger return spring. Now I've pre-oiled all these parts before I put them back together. So all I need to do is take this strut spring and put it onto the strut plunger and it doesn't matter which side of the spring goes on first. And then I'm going to put it into this hole in the front of the hammer. Now from here I just need to compress this strut spring and put the strut on. And I'm just going to push down on that spring and put that strut on. Now you need to be careful that you don't shoot this out. But as you can see, everything is moving freely. There's nothing really holding this strut in place. Now we're going to put this spring in, but it's not really going to do anything yet. It's when we actually put it into the frame is when the spring gets compressed. What I'm going to do is grab this by the long leg and just insert this in here and just let it sit. Now the tricky part is to put this into the frame. The tricky part is to get this hole in the hammer onto this bigger pin while the spring is going to go onto this smaller pin. And we're just going to kind of just maneuver things around until this thing falls into place. Now as you can see everything is moving nice and freely with the trigger and the hammer. Now we're going to get that trigger return spring onto the trigger. And to do this, you may need a pair of small needle nose pliers. Now this trigger return spring needs to rest here on the trigger. But the trick is, is get around this nub first. So what I'm going to do is grab this and compress it and rest it right here onto the trigger. So as you can see, now we have some tension on that trigger. Now I'm going to install the crane and cylinder. And for this, we'll need the crane and cylinder, the plunger spring, the plunger, and the crane lock. Now I've already pre-oiled the crane right here. And what I'm going to do is take the plunger and the spring and put them together. And it doesn't matter which side the spring goes onto the plunger. And we're going to drop this right into the front of the crane here. And from here, I'm going to slide this into the frame just like that. Now you can see that, that plunger has got a little bit of spring tension. So I'm going to push it in and I'm actually going to latch the cylinder. Now there's not much to this crane lock and you might need a pair of needle nose pliers to get it on. Now this crane lock is going to go into this groove on the crane here and it's just going to rest just like this. Now there's nothing holding that crane lock on. It's the side plate that holds it down. So be careful because as you rotate this around, it might come out. Now it's time to install the hand. Now it can be a little tricky because we need to make sure that this trigger return spring is actually riding on the groove, not this pin, because that pin is going to go right here in the hand. Now on the back of the hand is a groove, which is where this hand spring is going to ride. So what I like to do is just put the hand spring right into that groove and then rotate this around so that it rests right onto the pin. From here I'm just going to make sure I give it a push and as you can see there's a lot of play there. So you need to be careful that that doesn't pop off. Now it's time to install the side plate and to do this we're going to need a 564 inch allen head. We're also going to need the side plate, the small screw, and the large screw and that large screw is currently compressing the mainspring. Now we're going to need to decompress this mainspring but we need to do it safely. So what I'm going to do is take a finger put it right over here on the hand. I'm going to cock the hammer and then from here I'm going to remove the screw. From here I'm just going to test to make sure everything is working fine. I can see the hand rotates the cylinder and everything is operating good. 
So what I'm going to do is take the nub of this side plate, put it right here, and rotate that side plate into place. And then I'm going to install my large screw in the back. And now I can install the small screw in the top hole. Now once again, I'm going to function test that everything is working. Now it's time to put the barrel on. And for this step, we're going to need a six thousandth of an inch feeler gauge and a barrel nut wrench. Now right. for this step, we're going to need the barrel shroud, the barrel, and the barrel nut. Now on the barrel, there's a long thread and a short thread. The long thread is going to go towards the cylinder, whereas the short thread is going to go towards the muzzle. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to thread this barrel in. Now, now it's going to take a while to thread this barrel in. Now we're going to thread this up to the cylinder, but we're going to put the feeler gauge between the barrel and the cylinder just enough that there's a little bit of drag. Now as you can see, I'm just tuning this barrel. Like right there is a little too much. Right there is just a little bit too tight. That's about right. So now from here, we're just going to take that barrel shroud and put that onto the barrel. Now it's time to put the barrel nut on. And right there, we're still pretty good. And now that barrel's installed and we can put the grip on. For this, we're gonna need a 532nd inch Allen head. We're gonna need the grip and the grip screw. And we're just going to put that on and tighten the screw. So when these screws are over tightened, you'll see that the hammer does not lock back on single action. What we'll do is just loosen that screw until that hammer locks back on single action. And that's how you do a deep cleaning on one of these Dan Wesson Model 15s. Thanks for watching. Hope you're staying safe out there. Look forward to seeing you again soon.